one and all present here. To commemorate the Platinum Jubilee of the College, Center for International Programs and Partnerships, Mount Carmel College Autonomous, welcomes you to this two-day international conference on global business transformation leveraging technology. Held today and tomorrow, the 14th and 15th of July, 2022. Prayer being the link that connects us with God, we now call upon our campus coordinator, Dr. Sister Sajita, to lead us through the prayers, seeking the blessings of God Almighty. Let us bow our heads in surrender. A reading from the Holy Bible. Wisdom is the reflection of the eternal light, untarnished mirror of God's active power, image of God's goodness. Although alone, she can do all. Wisdom is unchanging. She makes all things new. In each generation, the wisdom passes into holy souls. She makes them friends of God and prophets. Gracious and Heavenly Father, we surrender ourselves at your feet and pay our homage in praise and thanksgiving for the wonderful way you have created us, molded and shaped us, guarded, protected and provided for us and brought us to this day to witness this international conference on global business transformation leveraging technology. MCC in association with the University of Central Oklahoma. Dear Lord, may this collaboration and concession pave a big way for all the participants and scholars into a business world where they may enhance the international business opportunities in technological innovations, transforming each of them into professionals capable of working in dynamic environments. Lord, we pray to bless Mount Carmel, University of Central Oklahoma, the resource persons, the paper presenters, participants, the conference secretary, Dr. Ramesh, the organizing committee, member Ms. Rajini Kora, and team, and everyone who have facilitated this mega event during our Platinum Jubilee year. May we carry the beacon of our alma mater and our saintly foundress, Mother Teresa of St. Rose of Lima. We make this prayer in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, sister. True leaders don't create followers. They create more leaders. We now call upon our Dean, Dr. S. Ramesh, Dean for International Programs and Partnerships, to welcome the gathering. Reverend sisters, learned colleagues, participants and friends, unprecedented changes have taken place in the global business environment. The technology disruption has changed the very fabric and landscape of global business. The pandemic has brought a new normal called as confusion, chaos and uncertainty. The new normal has stayed for so long that it, become, it has become the regular normal. All this is a result of the technology and innovation. Sustaining this culture of innovation requires new blend of ideas, policies, strategies, and more especially blending technology, people and processes. It is in fulfilling this felt need that Mount Carmel College, in association with University of Central Oklahoma, organizes this conference to commemorate the Platinum Jubilee of Mount Carmel College Autonomous. To mark this inauguration, we have Dr. Sister Aparna, 
manager mount carmel convent and also the principal of mount carmel central school i extend a very very warm welcome to your sister we also have a source of inspiration in our principal dr sister arpana always motivating us and encouraging us to do many academic activities i extend a very very warm welcome to our principal we have two pillars of strength dr sister sajita and dr leka george the campus coordinators who have been encouraging us in many ways to conduct many academic activities of the department i extend both of them a very very warm welcome dr jeff willis who is the assistant dean of the university of central oklahoma was chiefly responsible for bringing this partnership where we have associated with this university for this particular conference i extend a very warm welcome to all the officials and most especially professor jeff willis to this conference dr michael von miller who is the dean of the university of wisconsin has agreed to deliver the keynote address so extend a very very warm warm welcome to dr von miller we have many resource persons and chair persons who will be chairing different sessions of the conference i am very grateful to them and extend them a very very warm welcome dr jayappa who is the special officer of the karnataka state higher education council has agreed to be the chief guest at the valedictory function i extend a very warm welcome to dr jayappa we have different deans of the faculties of mount carmel college i extend them a very very warm welcome we have many participants from among the teachers and students as also the corporate professionals all of them are very grateful and for their participation in this conference and extend them a very very warm welcome many colleagues of mine have worked very very hard during at least these days to make this conference happen most specially professor rajini who has left no stone unturned in order to bring this conference to all of us i extend a warm welcome to ms rajini and also other research scholars and especially most especially my the students of our department who have been of great help to us in organizing this conference i extend all of them a very warm welcome the center for international programs and partnership we have mr anand mr arun ms pratibha always a constant source of support to us i extend them a very warm welcome i extend a very very warm warm welcome to one and all present here and have a great day thank you ramesh sir light symbolizes knowledge knowledge removes ignorance with prayer in our heart we start this event with lighting of the lamp we now request reverend dr sister aparna a local manager and principal mount carmel central school reverend sister arpana our principal reverend dr sister sajita our campus coordinator dr leka george our campus coordinator and dean of science dr ramesh dean of international programs and partnership to like We now have our principal, Dr. Sister Arpana, to deliver the inaugural address. Greetings from Mount Carmel College Autonomous. Unprecedented technological changes have made a great impact on the global business environment. Thanks to the pandemic, such a transformation has changed the way we do the business across the borders. Although opportunities in international business are growing. in quality and quantum the right approach to taking advantage of technology and strategy is evidently missing among the companies across the globe thus this conference organized by center for international programs and partnerships of our college 
in association with University of Central Oklahoma addresses such transformation opportunities and strategies for long run sustainability of global business i am happy to inaugurate this conference and sure that the deliberations of this conference would be useful to teachers students and policy makers i wish the organizers and participants all the best god bless humble yourself before the lord and he shall lift you up that was our principal dr sister arpana thank you sister we now move to the keynote address by dr michael formula professor university of wisconsin river falls usa hello and welcome to our conference on global business transformation and the role of technology in that my name is michael fromuller uh, i'm a professor for strategic and international management in the university of wisconsin system i'm also a volunteer reviewer and mentor for the association for the advancement of collegiate schools of business aacsb and a strategic management consultant for uh, universities and businesses and in that role i've had the opportunity over the past two decades to visit with a great number of schools and businesses and i've got to tell you that the last two years were extremely interesting and so i'm i'm going to use Uh, this opportunity to talk to you about my impressions during this trying time and yes i am referring to the pandemic you see march of 2020 in many ways was a paradigm shift a watershed a major major disruption for both educational institutions and businesses uh very quickly within you know days maybe weeks businesses and education had to completely change the way they do business i remember talking to colleagues before march 2020 about the possibility of someday moving fully online with our educational offerings and the answer of course i got was not in my lifetime and of course what happened in march 2020 is that those same colleagues ended up pivoting on a dime and for most schools it was you know maybe a week to come up to speed but all of a sudden we had done a complete shift in terms of the modality for delivering education and for many businesses those that didn't rely on direct and client contact you know so restaurants would not be in that group but a lot of other businesses did the same thing they moved from in person meetings to virtual meetings and all of a sudden group offices were out and home offices were in and so what does that have to do with with our topic here well the the fact that this happened that this transition was even possible is linked directly to technology and i'm going to throw another part into that and that's the you know some might call it salvation Uh, out of the pandemic it it should surprise all of us that we were able to come up with a vaccine so quickly because in past pandemics it took years to get to a point where even a trial solution was possible this time we had it within a matter of a couple of months and the only thing that really made this possible is technology that came about over just the last couple of years the advent of combinatorial mathematics that allowed researchers to take computer models of the virus's g- uh, genes and slice them and dice them and on the computer try out different ways to either incapacitate the virus or to try chemical con- compounds on it in the, in the final solution it ended up being a recombinant uh, strand of dna but that only was possible because of the ability to try in computer models millions and billion solutions uh for coming up with such a product so how is this possible we find ourselves today right in the midst of what many are calling the fourth industrial revolution a process that has brought about quantum changes in how we do business in what business is 
and what organizations are, in what society does, and how we approach our future. It's, of course, brought about by the development of computer technology and information uh, processing, and we really find ourselves in an information revolution. The amount of information that is accessible all of a sudden and the ability to process it has never been greater. So as a result, if we take a look at the corporate landscape of today, if you look at the largest corporations, most of them really don't have many assets, certainly not anything uh, approaching the sum total of, of their, their, book, their book capital. In other words, we've seen a shift from uh, capital assets, from ta tangible assets to knowledge. And that knowledge is the foundation of the organization's core competence. So core competence shift, competencies shift from patents and equipment to where it's the stored up knowledge and the ability and the skills of the individuals in the organization. That has huge consequences because all of a sudden, the ability to build greater competencies and to maintain them really relies on workforce management more than ever before. And many of our organizations, and that includes business schools, are very ill prepared for it. We really work on old models, on the ability to take a fixed set of knowledge and install that into our students and have them be able to use that for the rest of their life. Those days are over. Knowledge these days tends to be more ephemeral. It doesn't last as long. Uh, we have to tell our students and our employees that frequent job retraining is going to be the norm and not the exception. Uh, job tenures are going to be shorter. Uh, work is going to be in transitory work groups. And one skill that's going to power all of them is the ability to have emotional intelligence. So what, I, what do I mean with that? I'll give you an example of what the opposite is. A couple of months ago, we saw, and it was repeated all over the internet, a financial services executive do a mass firing of 800 of his employees in a Zoom meeting. He did that in a way that was um, ad hominem, in a cold way, in, in, in a way that was no way expected by the employees. So he, in my textbook, gets a zero or, or an F minus in terms of emotional intelligence. Workers in this new economy are going to have to be able to anticipate the reaction of their, of their action on others and the ability to generate not, uh, not negativism, but support and the ability to work together. Workers are also going to have to be more of an autodidactic group. Autodidacts are able to master information that, that they determine on their own. They figure out what they need to know. They acquire the knowledge and they are able to apply it on the job. This is not just lifelong learning. This is figuring out what to need, what you need on your job the next week and how to get it. Chief among those are going to be are going to be creativity and innovation. Uh, one of the things we're finding already is that as as part of the fourth industrial revolution, uh, artificial intelligence are going to likely take overtake some human jobs. And the funny thing is, a, a lot of our students don't realize that. I had a conversation with uh, one of our accounting graduates who was looking forward to his job in a small CPA firm. And, and he had told me that he's not worried about the fourth industrial revolution because he's now, uh, he's now going to be a CPA in a, in a nice accounting firm. So, so I asked him what they, what they have him do on the job. And the answer was, well, he processes small businesses uh, paperwork at the end of the year for taxes. And and so I asked him, have, have you heard about artificial intelligence? And do you know that artificial intelligence is better at preparing tax forms than you are? Well, it, that created a little crisis for him. And I think 
he, he's already trying to figure out how he can advance his skill set. So what, what we're really saying is that value generation and value distribution uh, is, is going to be changed completely. And only firms that can master the skill sets and the flexibility required by the fourth industrial revolution are going to be able to succeed. Uh, unfortunately, what we're looking at is not is not a, a normal uh, linear progression here that we can plan for as in the future. The speed of, of, of both generation of new knowledge and of diffusion of new knowledge has increased, unfortunately, geometrically, and some say even exponentially. So half the struggle is going to be just keeping up much rather than staying ahead. What are the implications for that? Businesses are going to have to focus on continuous skill training for their employees. They're going to be faced with more flexible job arrangements. You know, in, in education, we're talking about multimodal education. It, for business, very much the similar thing is going to be true. Uh, combine that with, with the need to have more diverse workforces because only diverse workforces can deliver the return uh, strategically on being successful. There's now overwhelming evidence that diverse workforces generate greater return on investment because they're simple, simply able to process knowledge intensive type stuff much, much better. Uh, so how can organizations design themselves for the future to be flexible, to be diverse, to have an autodidactic workforce, and to build on, a, on emotional intelligence so that the workforce can really complement each other? I see huge challenges ahead also socially because part of this churning and uh, turnover of jobs are, is going to challenge many countries in the future to come. If they can't keep up with retraining and restructuring jobs, uh, there's going to be a large number of unemployed individuals. And so the question becomes, how do we support those? So what's really needed in addition to just technological advancement is social advancement, how to build a society of the future that is supportive and rather than exploitive within this new context. Uh, I've taken a look at some of the topics that you're going to be working on in the conference, and I find them exciting. Uh, I really wish we could do this in person. I, I miss the opportunity after the conference to sit down and talk and exchange information and start new research connections and build on what we've done. But I, I wish you all lots of fun and uh, may it be a very, very productive uh, conference. If any of you have any question, want to reach out to me, uh, the conference organizers have my contact information. Thank you very much and uh, have a great couple of days. Thank you, sir. We come to the end of the inaugural session of the International Conference on Global Business Transformation, Leveraging Technology. On behalf of the Center for International Programs and Partnership, we extend our sincere gratitude to the management of Mount Carmel College, Dr. Sister Aparna, our local manager, Dr. Sister Arpana, our principal, Vice Principal Dr. Shamen Jero, Campus Coordinator Dr. Sister Sajita and Dr. Leka. We thank Dr. Michael Formula, Professor, University of Wisconsin, River Falls, for the keynote address. We also thank Professor Jeff Williams and other officials from the University of Central Oklahoma for associating with us. We thank all resource persons and chair persons for the conference who accepted our invite. Our uh, dear participants, faculty, research scholars and students from various universities. A sincere thanks to the office of CIPP, Ms. Pratiba, our constant support throughout the conference. Mr. Anand and Mr. Arun, who coordinated with the foreign delegates, Mr. Govinda Gowda and our research scholar, Ms. Sahana, a support, Raja sir, Shashida sir, Venu sir, Antony sir, Radeep sir, and our very own Dean, Dr. S. Ramesh, who has been very enthusiastic about the event and has made it happen. We hope you all have a fruitful session these two days. We now have the technical session starting at 10.30 a.m. 
please log on to the respective session link given in the schedule. Thank you so much.